Welcome back to another Lenten devotional video. It is Friday. My name is Pastor Jonathan Hart with Roberts Dell United Methodist Church, and this is day, I believe, 26 in our 40-day reading through the Gospel of Mark. Uh, it is Friday, and therefore, Flamingo Day. I hope you like my shirt. I'm just kidding. I don't know what flamingos have to do with the day other than I like this shirt. Uh, and today I'm Sabbathing, so uh, I've got my coffee here. I bid you top of the morning. This is actually one of my favorite coffee mugs. This mug uh, is from the Dew Drop Inn in Mobile, world famous hot dogs, over a hundred years. You ever eaten at the Dew Drop? I love the Dew Drop. Been eating there since I since before I can remember. Uh, anyway, that's enough small talk from Pastor Jonathan today. Welcome. And we are journeying through the Gospel of Mark. Uh, yesterday we saw in chapter 10 that Jesus was approaching Jerusalem. Some significant things were already happening as he was having conversation with his disciples, particularly James and John, and continuing to explain about how the kingdom of God that Jesus came to usher in was different than the kingdoms of this world. He then had uh, a conversation with a blind man that he healed named Bartimaeus right outside the city. And today we get to read the famous passage of his actual entry into Jerusalem, the holy city. We're gonna be preaching about this on Sunday. We are actually observing Palm Sunday at Robertsdale UMC this weekend uh, so that we can focus on the passion of Christ, the passion narrative, the Holy Week events, even uh, leading up to Good Friday and his suffering and his crucifixion uh, before we celebrate the resurrection on Easter Sunday. So today we're going to read this. Uh, tomorrow we'll continue in chapter 11, uh, picking up in verse 27 and going on into uh, chapter 12. Uh, as we continue to look at Jesus approaching his final destination, the city of Jerusalem. As they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethpage and Bethany at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and just as you enter it, you will find a colt tied there, which no one has ever ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, Why are you doing this? Tell him, The Lord needs it, and we'll send it back here shortly. They went and found a colt outside in the street, tied at a doorway. As they untied it, some people standing there asked, What are you doing untying that colt? They answered as Jesus had told them to, and the people let them go. When they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks over it, he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, while others spread branches they had cut in the fields. Those who went out ahead and those who followed shouted, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our father David. Hosanna in the highest. Jesus entered Jerusalem and went to the temple. He looked around at everything, but since it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. The next day, as they were leaving Bethany, Jesus was hungry. Seeing in the distance a fig tree in leaf, he went to find out if it had any fruit. When he reached it, he found nothing but leaves, because it was not the season for figs. Then he said to the tree, May no one ever eat, from, eat fruit from you again. And his disciples heard him say it. On reaching Jerusalem, Jesus entered the temple area and began driving out those who were buying and selling there. He overturned the tables of the money changers and the benches of those selling doves and would not allow anyone to carry merchandise through the temple courts. And as he taught them, he said, Is it not written, My house will be called a house of prayer for all the nations? But you have made it a den of robbers. The chief priests and the teachers of the law heard this and began looking for a way to kill him, for they feared him because the whole crowd was amazed at his teaching. When evening came, they went out of the city. In the morning, as they went along, they saw the fig tree withered from the roots. And Peter remembered and said to Jesus, Rabbi, look, the fig tree you cursed has withered. Have faith in God, Jesus answered. I tell you the truth, if anyone says to this mountain, go throw yourself into the sea and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that what he says will happen, it will be done for him. Therefore, I tell you, whatever you ask for in prayer, Believe that you have received it, and it will be yours. And when you stand praying, if you hold anything against anyone, forgive him, so that your Father in heaven may forgive your sins. Wow. I don't know about you, but there's a lot there. There's a lot in these verses uh, that we could talk about, so I'll try to make this brief. And, and I would love for you to just ask the question, Lord, what are you saying to me through this text today? Uh, the bottom line here is that uh, what Jesus has been showing since chapter 8, chapter 9 of Mark's gospel is finally coming to pass, that he is the king. 
He's the king of the Jews, and that means in the history of Israel that the king of the Jews is also the savior of the world. Of course, as Jesus enters, uh, the prophecy is fulfilled. The people are laying coats. They don't just do this for anybody. They do it for royalty. They're cutting branches and waving it again. This is how they heralded um, a revolutionary named Judas Maccabeus, who led a revolt 200 years prior to this and ushered in a dynasty that lasted for a hundred years. Um, that story is not in our Protestant Bible. It's in the book of 2 Maccabees, uh, chapter 10. Um, and N.T. Wright, uh, in his commentary, Mark for Everyone, uh, talks about that. And he also talks about how uh, Jesus goes into the temple. But uh, again, in this passage, we have a Mark and sandwich, right? So Mark starts a story interrupts it with another story, finishes it by concluding the first story. So it makes kind of a sandwich. And one thing that's helpful uh, is as Jesus enters the city um, as a king, riding on a colt, cloaks, palm branches, they still aren't getting the message that the uh, revolution he's coming to bring, the kingdom of God, which by the way, they, they include a dangerous prayer uh, in, in, in speaking the prophecy of Isaiah, they, they use the prophetic language, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, but then they say, blessed is the coming kingdom of our father David. Uh, that is heralding Jesus as Messiah, which is politically dangerous because they're suggesting that he's coming to overturn the systems that are presently in control. However, uh, we need to understand why Jesus is cleansing the temple in the way that he is. Uh, many have said that uh, Jesus is simply showing the evil in commercializing religion. That's not totally what's going on here. Of course, that's not a good thing either. But what Jesus is doing is he's basically bringing judgment against the very temple that was meant to be the presence of God. Because the point of God dwelling with his people in his temple was that it would also result in peace and salvation for other people as well. The temple was to be a place where God's peace and God's favor uh, would just exude out of it, even into the surrounding nations. And it had become by this day the exact opposite. It was held up by religious people. It was held up by a system uh, that was helping the rich get richer, uh, was continuing to marginalize the poor. It was not uh, being, it was not resulting in peace um, and, and relief for poor. Uh, it was not serving the underprivileged and doing all those things. And, and therefore God's judgment and God's wrath uh, was against it. And Jesus came to live that out in kind of a parable form and he uses the fig tree to explain just that. So the reason we have this story of the fig tree uh, and, and Mark is careful to say that the fig tree wasn't producing figs because it wasn't the season for figs. Nonetheless, Jesus uh, condemns the fig tree for its fruitlessness. And then when he comes out of the temple, Peter sees that the fig tree has actually started to wither. So he sees again this supernatural power that because Jesus has cursed this thing, it's already beginning to wither and die. Then Jesus says, if you have faith, you can say to this mountain, move. Now that might seem like an odd place for Jesus to talk about faith that can move a mountain and forgiveness, but all of this goes together. And where was Jesus just leaving when he said this? The Temple Mount. So Jesus is saying, I can speak against the temple uh, because have faith in God and you can say to this mountain, move. So, so he's still talking about the temple. Uh, he's talking about faith that can move a mountain. He's also talking about forgiveness. Why do you think that's important? Well, because Jesus' whole ministry has been a ministry of healing and feeding and casting out impure spirits and loving people into the kingdom of God. So when Jesus brings this word of judgment or condemnation, it is not divorced uh, from a heart that still came to forgive. Uh, those who need forgiveness. And so all of this is still wrapped up in Jesus. It's not like Jesus changes channels and goes from being a gracious, loving, forgiving Savior to the instrument of God's judgment and wrath and condemnation. No, it's all part of one picture as Jesus is fulfilling his role as God's chosen and sent Messiah. What they still don't quite get yet is that he is walking the road to his suffering, that that is how he will fulfill it. That even though Jesus is the Son of God, King of the Jews, Savior of the world, he is also the Passover Lamb. He's entering the city at 
Passover. And what they never expected was for him to be the sacrificial lamb. We'll pick up there tomorrow at verse 27. God bless you this Friday. I hope that uh, you just take a few minutes to pray. Ask God to speak to you about what it means for Jesus to be your king. How can you lay your cloaks down, so to speak? How can you wave palm branches and usher the king uh, into this world and continue to live out that prayer? Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Grace and peace.